Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. Wish you a very happy and healy uh, cryptocurrency Tuesday. Want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happiest, the happiest. And my God, the one day that I take off is the day that Bitcoin actually moves. But the show must go on. Of course, we'll be talking about plenty of new things today. And before we get into that, I actually have remembered to talk about all my programs are on sale for the rest of the month, which is the next uh, four days. Four days, yeah. Four days, and uh, that's 20% off with the code YEAR20, all capitals, Y-E-A-R-20. Again, I always want to remind people, please take advantage of my free content first before ever thinking of investing in, in any of these things. These are designed for people who want to do this in a more serious manner. As you're not just going to be investing into these programs, but also into uh, members only Discord communities. So it's very important for me to keep the integrity of that group, you know, solid and the same. So, of course, if you're not looking to become, you know, a, a, a trader for a living in that sort of sense, then these are probably not for you, which is going to be most people because most people, you know, you have like you probably have like a, you know, a job or something like that. Anyways, um. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll briefly explain these because I just want to get through this. Uh, the Trade Life Professional Program is the technical analysis program that encompasses all of the different aspects that comes along with trading with regards to understanding underlying market dynamics, position management, risk management, obviously a ton of bonus modules, and of course, access into the members Discord community, plus access to two proprietary indicators. 35 hour plus long program. The Master Options Program is similar to that, but with regards to the derivative products options. I would strongly, strongly recommend that you have a, a, at least a decent base in technical analysis before ever thinking about the options program. And then the jewel indicators are quite literally just access to um, to to the indicators. So with that said, let's get on to the pro or let's get on to the actual analysis right now because my God, turn that off. No embarrassing mishaps today. There we go. Finally, motherfucker. And as you can see, Bitcoin actually smashed them right back down, testing the 50 exponential on the daily, and more importantly, breaking the 21 exponential so far. We actually did see this pattern finally come to fruition, the one that we've been looking at for the past uh, week, week and a half. Uh, lower time frames got this one well. And of course, we've been, you know, yeah, I mean, this, this, is kind of, this is kind of the market at large right now, right? Where essentially, we'll put in a pattern like this. Uh, we put in a nice rise in which we broke it um, actually over the weekend on the 24th. Officially, we spoke about it then. And then slowly but surely just kind of slinked its way over as the real trading week starts. So, of course, the move happens on a Monday when CME is open, when GBTC is open. And, uh, and then we can actually see it have some follow through. So... Uh, pretty much did hit the measure move on this guy. Not perfectly, but, you know, close enough is close enough, uh, especially on a nice move like this. We are holding up a bunce, uh, uh, sorry, above the four hour 200 simple and 200 exponential. So I don't want to be getting too damn bearish, but more importantly, we have broken this blue box territory right here. So we have retested it in the early morning hours. It has been uh, rejected. So it's so we're respecting it as resistance so far. So if I am still in a trade, which I actually am still in a trade, uh, I will be using this blue box territory to kind of manage upon. Of course, it's not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Blah 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 blah. Go fuck yourself, ESMA. God damn, I need Daniel Zillikis around me at all times to to tell me what the European regulatory agencies are. Basically, anyways, um, you know, as so essentially, as long as we're below this this thirty nine thirty ish area, I would look for pressure down. Um, the rising wedge yes did break to the downside, but we we still have this trend line to deal with that's been kind of governing price action and walking price action up ever since um you know middle of February, uh, having one two three four five now six spikes down on it. Yeah, it does feel like pressure is down on it right now. Uh, but until it actually officially breaks, I wouldn't be getting too damn bearish. Uh, if it does break, uh, I'd be looking at I need to see like a two hour four hour total close below uh, thirty eight. Let's just call it 38.50, make it easy. Then I'd be looking for that move down to about 36.50, somewhere down around here. So another perhaps uh, nice trade to be had. Um, I mean, even yesterday, like the trade was what? 30, 39.80 on the high of yesterday down to 38.60 essentially. I mean, that's that's Bitcoin nowadays. There's our $100 move for the week. Um, but more importantly, let's let, let's spend some time on the higher time frames because actually these are the ones that everything is being signaled upon, and uh, we can all see that the yellow twenty minute exponential on on, uh, on the daily is resisting price action. In fact, we can see that same blue box territory kind of rounded up by the eighty nine exponential, the cyan moving average right here, and the yellow twenty one um, encompassing the tw the thirty nine twenty to thirty nine forty ish uh, territory. So as long as we are below there, you know, I would be leaning towards more downside, especially with the way that we've kind of rejected from the twenty one, um, you know, in the early morning hours. It does look like it wants some more continuation to me. If I'm just looking at the daily. We 
we do have Daily Stoke still headed healthily down. Uh, more importantly, crossing the more critical zone, which has called major tops in the past year, uh, going all the way back. I mean, this was your double top at 12,000 in February. This was your top at 10,000 in May. This was your top at 84 in August. This was your top at uh, 73 in September. And then your breakage of 6,000. And then, you, I mean, you uh, you get it. Anyways, crossing down in that around in that range. And oh my God, it's a dildo party. My God. Welcome and pleasure to meet you. Jay? Is it Jay? Oh man, I need to I need to fix the um I have so much stuff to do and I just want to build this computer and <laughs> and and I need to fix such menial things as just getting the text right on that can be done. It's quite easy, but I've been quite held up myself because I'm 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 the type of person where I think I have like some sort of I'm definitely autistic in some way because I I, I will look at something and I'll get tunnel vision with it and I just won't I'll just disregard every other part of my life until that's done. And right now that's a fucking computer. So besides doing these uh, besides doing these analyses, which I have to do for myself anyways, you know, because I mean this is this is what I do for a living. Um, uh, I'm, I'm I'm gonna be going back to that, but hopefully I think I'm almost done by probably by today. You never know, though. Anyways, uh, while we're on here on the daily, uh, daily RSI is now is so we saw it get rejected from the exponential a couple days ago. That was my initial kind of uh, insight, the saying like, "Hey." probably going to break down here. There is pressure down. Once again, uh, we are in the neutral zone. Currently speaking, overall, this RSI, I would say, is more bearish on the total. We're just also going to be between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone. The one drive into the bullish control zone was was very quickly rejected. In fact, this was all done on a weekend to begin with. We're not seeing the same sort of signature on, on CMEs, more importantly. Uh, Daily Jewel is giving a soft signal. Um, a soft signal sounds sounds like something that you found on Skinamax, but uh, not anything in and of itself. Um, let's see. What about the two-day? Two-day is now has has lost the exponential as well in the RSI, kind of trending down. We had a little bit of bearish divergence at the top, uh, which I completely missed before. Uh, two-day Stokes are actually still kind of up, but losing momentum. Uh, the three-day, I will tell you, uh, I guess I'll just spoil it. They're actually down right now, which we'll just get to right now. Uh, but while we're on here on the two-day, I do want to denote that this 50 exponential, this green moving average, which I, which we've been looking at for the past year, uh, each and every time that Bitcoin's gotten above it, that has kind of called like the last of the last of that rally. And as you can see, that is what got rejected before moving on down. In fact, we did close this two-day dildo just like a, a buck or two above it, and then immediately shut right back down below. The time before that was obviously right here not the most aggressive reaction but you know gets you know regains the 50 exponential and sorry the green moving average to say and then kick quickly kicked out and did get some continuation to the downside but overall was was what was was rebought up uh, the times before that in this past year since the market cycle turned was right here on the run to 7400 the same areas that we looked at on the stokes basically saying that uh, once we regained it it was quickly rejected and then back onto the downside of the range to 6000 time before that was right over here this one actually got quite a few dildos closing above but eventually once it gave up, gave back up the 50 exponential to the downside, it's just straight move down to 6,000. The time before that, a lot more precise at the run to 10,000 right here, breaks it right at uh, 91, 9,200, and straight on down to 6,000 as well. And then the time before that was right here where where we regained it for just you know a, it was actually a double top kind of similar to what we're looking at right now and uh, once it was lost once again you know just straight on moved back down to the downside of the range just like fiddle around with this comb which obviously i don't use <laughs> anyways uh scrolling back into the more immediate time frames um you know you can see that uh you, uh you can see that we are respecting that right now um, but overall, on the two-day total time frame, it's a 21 exponential and the 50 exponential that are kind of governing the more, the greater consolidation right here, which has not been resolved. We're looking at a very small piece of the pie when we're going down into the four hour. Right now on the two-day, you can see that this is very obviously, you know, trying to do its own thing with the support coming in right around 38.50, which lines up with that uptrend line that we just looked at on the lower time frames, And obviously our resistance, which is now sloping down, uh, which was 4,000, now 39.90 technically, and will be sloping down more. As these two moving averages approach each other, as we spoke about yesterday, they're likely to give insight on a which way that this, is, that this is actually going to collapse or explode, uh, depending upon the slopes of these moving averages, which right now are a little bit more aggressively to the downside. In fact, they are aggressively to the downside, I would say, uh, with the way that the 21 has completely leveled out after that move. Um, let's go on over. Whoa, how did that get there? Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> that didn't go over well. Anyways, go over here to the three-day uh, three day total time frame is quite interesting because the three-day total time frame stokes are actually wanting to cross down. Me too. One second. <laughs> You bastard. Okay. Got it. 
crisis uh, averted and don't have to lose that. All right, uh, three-day soaks are crossing down, but more importantly, they're crossing down right at the edge of the bullish control zone. And even on top of that, we do have this. Oh, I already have it drawn in there because I've done it a million fucking times. Uh, we already have this trend line uh, coming all the way back in from the highs of 20,000 in, in December 2017. Do you remember it? I do. <laughs> do you remember? We remember. The North remembers. The Crown remembers. And the Cave remembers for sure. The Cave remembers. There you go. Uh, getting the tops right here at 20,000. Getting the top right here at 10,000. Getting the top right here at 8,400. All the bull traps uh, since since the turnaround of the market, essentially. And we're getting right around this area, which is clo you know kind of close enough. It's close enough. Um, and turning down once again. So to me, this is saying that uh, be aware that this it, it does look like it wants to be re uh, respected right now. Um, and if we do actually get another another tick confirming, I think that that would be probably just enough for me as well, even more importantly with the three day stokes, just them turning for the past year has been a pretty massive, uh, uh, a pretty massive sell signal ever since 20,000. I mean, th uh, this was your double top at 12,000 turning down. This was again, your, your top 10,084 break of 6,000. Then once again, we're kind of turning down, um, not, you know, not, not super powerful in and of itself, but in confluence with all the other things that we're looking at, does need to be taken into consideration. Uh, we do see the three day 21 exponential supporting price action right around that critical 3850 ish area. So the three day 21, the two day 21, or sorry, was it the two day? Yeah, the two day 21, the daily 20, no, the daily uh, 50. Uh, all coming in around that critical 3950-ish range, which also does agree with that uptrend line that we uh, uh, that we spoke about earlier as well. So a lot of things agree with that area, which um, which does seem to be the big bad area for the bulls. However, I would say with the way that we got, just got rejected from that current area uh, of 4,000, I would be leaning to the downside here. I mean, obviously in a bear market, I'm going to be leaning to the downside more often than not. Uh, when in doubt, go down. Or once you go bear, you don't go. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. Um, also, let's go over to the weekly now because the weekly is quite interesting weekly is very interesting to me actually so i interpret the last weekly total close we spoke about over the weekend as a rejection of the 200 exponential I, in fact I, I interpreted it as that uh even as even as early as friday of last week and now we actually have continuation of the downside once we took out the low of 39.19 on stamp uh that was uh this to me is confirmed as a local high and this is turning down with weekly support actually right around 3750 uh more importantly if we did want to uh map this out we could make a nice trend line descending right here kind of aligning with that 200 exponential if you're just going over the uh if, if you're just going over the the closes but but overall, you know, when I'm looking at something like this, I'm thinking to myself, uh, 200 exponential still resisting price action. The play for the last four or five months, and this is again a testament to that saying, it works until it doesn't, or the trend is your friend until the end of trend, whatever whatever variation of that you, that you prefer. Uh, the 200 exponential resist, resisting price action that has been the sell. The 200 simple has been the buy. So you're, you you bet your fucking ass that if Bitcoin gets back down to the 200 simple somewhere right around 3450, I'll, I'll be a buyer. I won't I won't be too damn bearish from a trading perspective until Bitcoin breaks the 200 simple to the downside. Am I bearish overall? I mean, I'm definitely more bearish here than not. I'm not, but as you know, as a trader, I'm neutral as long as we're uh, below the 40, uh, sorry, the 200 exponential at 4,100 and above the 200 simple at 3,450 and rising currently. So. Uh, if if, uh, if we break to the downside, I become extremely bearish, looking for a move into the mid to low 2000s. If we break the 200 exponential to the upside, I'd be looking for a move into the deeper 4000s, 4500, very, 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 very likely, and then 47, 48, perhaps, um, if that were to happen. But for right now, uh, you can see that we're still kind of respecting this area. Uh, we do see weekly oscillators taking on a little bit more of a bearish posture. In my opinion, I would, I would, I would consider the RSI bearish, not just because we're in the bearish control zone, but more importantly, we are re still respecting the trend line, the resistance trend line going in from this past consolidation uh, above 6,000 between July of 2018 to November of 20, 2018 before breaking 6,000. Uh, this has created a resistance trend line on the RSI, which does come in right at the edge of the bearish control zone, which we have, you know, to me, this we're kind of like turning down off of right now. Uh, not only that, but you can see on the charts we are printing some massive now confirmed hidden bearish divergence because this is confirmed as a local high and comparing it with this high right over here, which is higher. We have, we are using a significantly higher amount of the RSI. This is being, I'm, I'm explaining this absolutely terribly. So please feel free to make fun of me in the comment section. Um, but you know the RSI is, is 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 driving up while price action is essentially remaining flat and stagnant. And if we're looking at total closures, which is what the RSI is calculated off of, they're actually getting lower. Which this would be an example, technically speaking, of hidden bearish divergence. Um, 
as uh, as 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 we just confirmed that as a local high. Uh, where does hidden bearish divergence typically pay, take you back down to? Well, I'd like to look at the RSI for this one, and I'd, I'd, at the, I'd at the very least look for another test of the exponential. That wouldn't take too much, um, but probably somewhere back down around the uh, the mid 30s uh, would kind of make sense. But you know, like I said, if if you're like a medium or higher time frame player, the only thing that the only things that you should really care about is the 200 exponential and the 200 simple, 4100 and 3450. Whichever one breaks first, that's the next uh, that's the next kind of nice trending direction. As long as we're be playing between these guys, the play the play at least for me is to be a seller on resistance and a buyer in support, and uh, and that's what I've been doing. Main, basically, mainly doing doing it on my main account, but also very small positions. So just, just again, I'm really trying hard to put this computer together. As I do watch. Oh my god, man, I just missed another trade on Forex. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. Oh well. Um, okay, so we spoke about all the higher time frames. Let's now go down to the 12 hour. I'm curious what the 12 hour is looking like. Uh, 12 hour had a complete collapse uh, below the 21. We are fucking around the 50 exponential right now. I'm not really telling us anything unique. Uh, all oscillators are pointing down. Uh, do, does want some continuation, it looks like to me. Uh, six hour, very obvious support. Again, coming in right around that 38, 38 50 is so fucking important from, the, from, um, from this perspective. Now, I do want to clear this up though. I did call this its own consolidation between uh, starting over here from 23rd of Feb to where we are currently. Basically, again, the same support, 38.50 and resistance around 4,000 and declining. Um, this is its own consolidation, which... You know, as long as long as we do hold up above 3850, you know, it could very easily be reaccumulated as if, if you're looking at the lower time frames. However, this is where I start to put the pieces together as the greater picture is very uh, is very corrective, whereas this, mm, you, I mean, it's 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 certainly lost a lot of its constructive nature, um, and I'd say it's it's probably looking more corrective now. But people, you know, if if someone called this uh, cr uh, constructive, I wouldn't I I wouldn't say that that's like completely wrong. Um, but when looking at the whole, I'd say that this is quite corrective, which everything needs to be taken into con in, in consideration of what of what the context is of the overall consolidation. And I'd say that that is corrective given the volume signature and given the price structure. Um, that's kind of what it looks like to me. So that would imply a more bearish tone overall, especially after coming off of a major massive downwards move. Well, you know, it's kind of likely. Anyways, uh, while we are here, I do want to put back on the drawing tools, go back to BitMexico and... Let's see. Yeah. So if Bitcoin really were to... If, if, if Bitcoin were to break that 3850 um, support that we just spoke about, you know, yeah, there is support right around 3650, all that good stuff. But realistically, I'd be looking for another test of this rising trend line that's been governing the lows ever since middle of December of 2018, getting one, two so far. And funnily enough, it'd be coming in around where the 200 simple is on the weekly as well. So, you know, if Bitcoin's going to still be playing the whole, you know, the, the range as a whole, this is what I'd be looking for. And let me just make sure I don't have some silly, okay, good, no sale thing floating around god that's so fucking embarrassing when i do that oh my god it's like i'm new to the internet jesus christ man um <clears throat> so yeah that's what i'm thinking about uh with regards to that of course because the monthly is coming to an end uh we uh, as, as jesus christ man let's get on over here there we go let's let's go to the monthly the monthly has about four more days of course and the monthly is hovering right around that green 50 exponential that ever so important green exponential on the monthly i'm gonna put it over here on the blx index which we broke down from for the first time in Bitcoin's history in December 2018. And ever since then, that has been governing the highs of this consolidation, kind of similar to the 200 exponential, but, you know, on a higher time frame. So it's a little bit more, a little bit more granular. Uh, getting one, two, three highs so far. And right now, uh, you know, as we just spoke about, we're literally right on it. Uh, it's technically a little bit below 3,900. It's 3,885 if you want to get super exact. So if Bitcoin does close above, I would be looking for that extended run into the 4,000s. That would supersede Bitcoin both opening and closing a weekly total above the 200 exponential for me. If Bitcoin closes below it, which I think is probably more likely, um, then I'd be looking for this overall consolidation to still get fleshed out. Uh, but it would certainly take on a significantly more bearish tone. This would be another another rejection off this, uh, you know, off this exponential moving average. And these two moving averages, more importantly, this this red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential uh, will cross on the next tick. Um, to the downside. So if we do close below the 50 exponential right here, that's going to tell me that this consolidation is getting is getting applied more and more pressure to the downside. As these two moving averages, you know, if they cross each other, a lot of big uh, a lot of big market movers are going to just gonna intensify their algorithmic selling. I mean, that's 
typically what they're going to be running off of, especially on a higher time frame like this, you know, because a higher time frames no one fucking looks at, it. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes it can be that simple. Um, but you know, a massive consolidation like this, I will look at these, these, these sorts of movement averages on a, on a higher time frame to kind of give me insight on a way this is likely to break down. I think that's quite clear, quite cut and dry uh, from the monthly perspective that all this has been, is just consolidation. And this will be confirmed in my mind fully if we close below the 50 exponential once again, which is 3885. It's, it, it, Exactly speaking, I've been saying 3,900 before. Technically, it's actually a few ticks below. Um, but with four four days left in the month to go, anything can happen. That's a, that's a fucking eternity in cryptocurrency land. I'm sure that you, like I, have seen Bitcoin do all sorts of crazy things in the span of like two minutes. Uh, Finex maintenance or, or or Bitmax maintenance comes to mind. Three hundred dollars up in one minute. Who knows? You know what's what's that all about? Um, but of course, if Bitcoin were to just flush out this consolidation more, uh, I don't necessarily have a timing on looking for the next target down, but it would imply that we likely are going to see a test of the 89 exponential, which is again, right in that mid to two thousand, mid 2000 range, which, you know, a lot of things are pointing there. Um, but of course I always want to preface this conversation by once again, stating, I do not even consider taking this trade until the pink 200 simple has broken, which is 3450. I need to see that broken before I even th consider this, but if that were to happen, I would would be looking towards that 89 exponential on the monthly right around 2500 but if we also put on the drawing tools here we can see plenty of target you know plenty of other technicals suggesting that price action as well i got the blue box sitting right between 2300 and 2600 which is uh, rounded out by these historical horizontal trend lines coming in from july 2017 which is also supported by the 886 for retracement which is actually where bitcoin did bottom out in 2014 2015 mark cycle right here if we put on the volume profile you'll notice that there is massive high value notes being thrown down in this mid 2000s range more importantly once 3400 is lost there is very little being done all the way down to uh, uh, down to mid to low 2000s very similar to what we saw at 6000 all the way all the way down to high 3000s um, and if we go back to the VLX index on the weekly, we can see that the 377s is right, in that, right, right around that range as well. So a lot of things coming around that area. If that were to happen, again, as a trader, I do not take that trade. I do not even consider taking that trade until the 200 simple is broken on the weekly. Um, right now, you know, technically speaking, I, you know, technically as a trader, I have to be neutral. My opinion can be all sorts of different things, but you know, as I always like to say, I don't trade my opinion. Um, I don't trade my opinion. I mean, the charts was telling you to be bearish the last few days uh, for this drop. Right now, it's saying we're just coming off of a major support, and <clears throat> you know, perhaps fade some expectations right now as. Uh, we do see that this trend line has been pretty robust over the past uh, month, two months. So again, uh, this this, uh, this formation is coming to fruition quite soon, though I can tell it does want it it does want to break uh, relatively soon, um, and if it does break back above thirty nine fifty, I would be looking for a quick move all the you know back above four thousand actually, uh, and that's probably going to lead on to the monthly closing above thirty nine hundred. So you know you're really going to start to see the domino effect, especially in the last few days of this month, because if we do take another leg down, I mean that's going to you know now we got now we got a significant resistance to kind of chew through. If, if Bitcoin actually breaks thirty eight fifty to the downside. I mean, this thing was pretty robust on the upside. It's going to likely be pretty robust uh, resistance on the downside. So, so this next kind of move is quite critical just because, you know, looking at it in the context of the next few days with, with the monthly in mind, it's, it starts to take on a, you know, a more significant tone, you know, it has carryover effect. Uh, and like we, like we can see right here, you know, if Bitcoin does break 3850, uh, you know, you will have support somewhere right around here, <clears throat> right around this, uh, this breakout area coming in from this kind of, uh, uh bear trappy area, um, which would be somewhere around 3650 ish. Uh, which at some point, you know, depending upon how long it takes, will meet up with this rising trend line that's been governing all the lows since middle of December. So good. We have a lot of good confluences right there. Let's switch out the longs and the shorts. Longs and shorts still in favor of longs. We have a little over 23,500 open longs versus a uh, little over 20,000 open shorts. 3,500 these guys hedged. Actually, significantly more amount people hedged uh, right now. So really only 17, a little under 17,000 open naked versus 23,500 open longs, which is about the same ratio that we saw before 6,000 broke uh in november uh, let me just remind you right here um but uh but uh ugh. this was your break of um of six thousand uh so longs were right around like the 24 2500 or twenty five thousand mark shorts were right around the red box here the top of the red box territory right here which we are currently hovering around uh right now as well which has actually emerged all of the you know, all, 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 all of the major dumps that we've seen for the past year have emerged from this area. So a lot of things kind of, you know, lining up. Um, like I said, it, it comes down to price action first. Uh, let's go check out CMEs. 
Uh, CME is the one, to, the, uh, the one that is significantly more important to me. And look at this. Look at where we found support on. Right on, <laughs> right on that critical support trend line that we broke out of uh, that had been holding this baby back for one, two, three, four, five drives, five rejections, then broke out on extremely, extremely low volume. And now we're, we're, we're coming back to test it once again, which to me, this does not look good. This does to me look like it wants to break down. We do have daily stokes having a fresh cross down in the more critical zone, which have been perfect at calling major dumps um, for the past year, except for except for actually the last one right here. Uh, I mean, you did get a dump. Sorry, I did not mean to hit the mic. Sorry, apologize, Mike. Um, and apologize to all the uh, all the years out there. Um, you know, I th this one was not huge, but it actually did. You know, it, it was a nice move for uh, for uh, for what it's worth. But all the other ones, major major dumps, all the same same ones that that we spoke about before. You know, ten thousand drop, twelve thousand drop, eighty four hundred drop, seven thousand drop, six thousand drop. Yeah. You, you, you got it by now. I don't want to bore you with that. Um, more importantly, we do have a very obvious support trend line, you know, coming in all the way back from this area, uh, which is technically speaking, and I've been saying 3,900. It's actually not 3,900. It's, it's technically speaking uh, right here at uh, 3865. If we can officially break that, uh, CMEs will completely collapse the structure from what, I, um, fr um, from what I'm seeing. I'll be looking for a quick move down to the 0.5 fib, which is where? 3650, baby. So again, a lot of confluences with this area. Right now, we're resting on the 21 exponential and the 50 exponential right here. The green and the and the yellow, also the 382 Fibonacci retracement. Good confluences between these, as you should have. You can see that we have so far reject from the red 10 simple moon average in the early morning hours. Um, and more importantly, the last time that we, you know, typically speaking, when you see a, a, a lower period go above a higher period, that would be a more bullish thing, which we actually see right here, a, a 21 and the 55, um, you know, the green and the yellow. Uh, but let's go look at the last time that, that we've actually seen this in, in uh, CME history. The only time that we've actually ever seen it in CME history, which was right here. And uh, kind of a similar situation where, you know, Bitcoin was on a little bit of a bull trap. Uh, you got the cross for a second. It comes down and tests it, bases on it for a day, and then just smashes right back down below it. Um, very, 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 very violent. So, you know, uh, are, you know, are we setting up for a similar thing? I mean, that has been the only other time that we've seen. N equals one is not a good distribution. It's not a good sample size, but it's all that we got for CMEs because they're quite young, which does make things uh, more difficult. Um, but overall, I do like CME charts as, uh, again, they were the ones that were saying, you know, be a little bit more bearish than not um, in relation to spot. Uh, we do have... I believe this rising wedge, actually, I, 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 I think, would I call this broken? Well, let's actually redo this for a four hour total time frame. This is what I don't, this is what I dislike about this shit because, you know, how do you draw? If you draw like this, well, that was obviously broken. Um, uh, uh, that was obviously broken on the 25th yesterday, which we saw. But now, do we redraw it like this? Because we do see that there's a couple of uh, width coming around this range. I mean, that's what makes these things so difficult and why I really don't trust them. Technically speaking, there would be a measure move for this baby to be played off of. Uh, we can do it really quickly. I'm going to guess that it probably points down to that 3650-ish uh, area. Um, no, it does not. It points down to 3750. Uh, fair enough. <clears throat> but more importantly, you can see that this trend line right here uh, is still supporting price action. So I don't Net, you know, what do I put more weight on? Do I put more weight on a rising wedge that's breaking down? No, I fucking hate wedges. Do I put more weight on a pattern that's been in for the past four, four and a half months, going all the way back to late November with this trend line governing all the price action? Actually, yeah, I do. So if Bitcoin does officially break it, and, I, and when I say officially break it, I mean at least a four hour total closing below. That's when I consider this confirmed as a hunt, which it looks it looks really likely. Don't get me wrong. I mean, everything's kind of lining up right now. But until, you know, until price action confirms, it's still just that four hour stokes are down. Daily stokes are just fresh cross down as we uh, as we just saw. Um, RSI is quite bearish right now as well. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, still still got some work to do. But the you know, our indicators do say down, but indicators have not been Indicators will out of you. I need to see price action, man. And again, you know, another trade where not really in any sort of any sort of rush. In fact, what I did this morning is I actually bought Bitcoin right around uh, 39.90, um, <clears throat> just because I I I, I want to see this area break first before getting a little bit more gung ho. Uh, I'm I'm completely cool with giving up on potential lost profits uh, if I can have more confirmation that the move is likely to occur. And that and this is what I'm going to be looking at CMEs for. Let's go check out GBDC as well. GBDC, another canary in the coal mine. What we saw over the weekend and testing the bottom support trend line of this of its rising wedge. So I do like the confluences that we see between CME and GBDC as those are the two more legitimate venues. Obviously, C 
CME significantly more legitimate. Uh, but I would say that uh, I would say that GBTC looks more bearish to me. It actually did break the 21 exponential and the 50 exponential on the last tick uh, after a very clear and obvious rejection of the 89 double top right here between your January highs. And we got all of our also suggesting down as well. Daily Stokes are having a fresh cross down. These have been damn good for the past year for getting major down moves. Uh, daily RSI uh, still playing out that bearish divergence between this point, this point, and this point. Uh, trending below the exponential. We've been speaking about that for a while as well. Be looking for this. I mean, really, if I'm looking at GBDC, this this one looks like it wants to come back down to three, uh, three. Sorry, four thirty two. Does not look good, um, especially with their hard high time frame. Also, it is uh, wanting some more down. Uh, weekly is where it really starts to get a little bit nastier as the weekly is now confirmed as a rejection with follow through. And I mean, that I mean, this thing has been unable to get above the yellow 21 exponential since, you know, April of last year. Uh, this is a clear rejection uh, by my standards. We are resting on the red 10 symbol for the weekly, but you know, this is confirmed as a local high now. And because it is confirmed as a local high, we can also confirm this as problem. Well, is it hidden bearish divergence? Mm, not really, not really, to be honest. Um, GBTC a little bit more sloppy than CMEs. So going back to that into the four hour, you see the 200 symbol kind of governing price action. I mean, you could say that, oh, you bastard, get off there. Uh, you could say that we do have uh, this rise of support trend line right here. I would say that this is, it looks to me like it wants to break. Um, and unless if we have like a major up open on the day, uh, it's, uh, I think, I think it's probably gonna break. Uh, let's go look at, uh, BNB or sorry, do we want to get on over to the shit coins right now? No, we don't, we don't want to do that just yet. Uh, let's get on over to, um, Mr. Buterall Cone and see what the other market leaders are doing. And, uh, Mr. Buterall, again, the canary in the coal mine as he'd been signaling weakness all the way through and officially breaking below this rise of support trend line. Also breaking the 382 Fibonacci retracement and breaking the 50 exponential all on one drive. I would be looking for this one to actually come back down to uh, low 130 on Finex, maybe even test the 0.5 at 126 and a half. Uh, overall, Mr. Buterall, looking like he wants down daily stokes down daily rsi trading their way towards the bearish control zone um daily jewel gave the signal days ago not bad not bad at all uh what else do we have um you know uh, or sorry I, I should always give the opposite side though uh if buterall got back above 140 ish area i would I, 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 I would say that this is a trap, although I I mean, the only thing that's kind of saying trap right now is the lack of volume going on. It kind of tells me that this is not a, this is not really the break that I'm looking for. Uh, what I want to see is an actual move, which if this is going to spill on over, it, it does likely happen very soon, meaning probably today. It doesn't happen by today. I, that would be... That would be a big warning signal. That would be a big warning signal, but I do want to see this have carryover... Um, I, I want to see it have a carry over about uh, pretty much today uh, if it, uh, if this is going to go. What about the 12 hour? Uh, yeah, 12 hour has broken all major movement averages except for the 200 simple. Uh, 12 hour, 12 hour Stokes down, 12 hour RSI bearish. Yeah, you know, again, I, I mean, this, this, this one has been the weaker one. Uh, like I said, if this one does take the next leg down, 126 and a half is where I'm looking towards. Anywhere between 126 and a half to 130 is kind of where I'm looking towards. But I, 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 uh, I would assume that we'd probably test 126 and a half. Um, <clears throat> if that is the right way to be looking at it, which I do believe it is. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, everything's kind of looking a little bit more down on this one. But this one has been the more droopy of the bunch. Let's go look at Mrs. Litecoin. Mrs. Litecoin has been the pearl of the, of, of, uh, of the market. And we called a top on this uh, about a week ago. And it looks to me like it's actually playing out a little bit of distribution at the top right now. Hitting major, uh, I, I consider this a test of the major moving average right here on the daily also playing out major major bearish divergence going all the way through one two three four five stabs uh five strikes you're out apparently uh again i'd still be looking for that move down to the 21 exponential the 21 exponential i would imagine probably does bounce it on first pass i'm actually gonna get rid of this horizontal right here as it's not too uh you know i, I i'd rather just be going off the 21 um i would be looking for a bounce on the 21 actually because mrs like was so you know was so strong to the upside uh usually the strong you know it's it's it, it's not like a game of averages. It's like if you're strong, you're you're likely going to go down less. If you're weak, you go down more. You know, the weak get weaker and the strong get stronger. In a bull market, that's why you know typically speaking, you want to go with the strongest ones. Like you know, your Facebook, your Amazons, your Netflix, your Googles. They, they're the ones who actually benefit the most. And then it's the shit stocks that you know get to rise to last. And that's actually one of the big one of the big concerns of the past week. You know, uh, 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 that we've been talking about here is that hey, when you see the shit coins rallying and then the majors are not. 
that's probably indicative of the end of that cycle. You know, it's probably indicative of the end of that cycle. At least that's how it typically operates in stocks, which is where I come from. Um, so yeah, if we do pop back down to the 20 mic exponential, I probably would be looking for a bounce there. Now it's, it's rising up pretty rapidly all the way to 56 and, uh, 56 and three quarters. Um, I do think that it comes down lower and I think that it actually probably does test uh, 54 and a half of, you know, over time, but Hey, you know, I don't trade my opinion. I, uh, and I obviously don't trade misses like Quinn as well. More importantly, we do have the daily total golden cross on the way. We got the 50 exponential and the 200 exponential lining up right now, which are getting extremely, extremely close. They will cross in the next couple of days. In the next couple of days, if Mrs. Like can, can keep it above the 21 exponential, they will cross. And at that point in time, I don't, I'm not bearish on anything that has a golden cross, but until that happens, there's a great play, play by the market movers that will draw in the retail unsophisticated traders and investors thinking that, oh my God, it's a golden cross. It has to happen. Crown said so. It's like, no, well, you have to wait for it to confirm first. Um, there's a very specific way to trade it. And then they'll get in and the, then the major market movers know this. And then right before it actually confirms or maybe a one day after it confirms and it's like kind of weak, they'll just fucking dump it right through and uh, entrap all these people. And now you got uh, rocket fuel to the downside. Um, but, 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 but until that's confirmed, I wouldn't be taking that trade. So it's going to be absolutely critical to see what the reaction is off the 21 exponential. If the reaction is good, if we get buoyed back up above $60 relatively fast, I would consider that a good reaction and probably the golden dildo cross is going to get played. And we probably do get another try up towards the prior high at this, at this critical 63 and a half dollar region, which as long as Mrs. Likewin is below, she's still technically not switched around the market cycle, but has been quite resilient and quite, quite impressive and definitely the best argument towards the bearish market being over. Uh, I wouldn't be bearish on Mrs. Likewin, however, until you actually break $52. If you break $52, I immediately get bearish. I'd be looking for another move down to $44.5 to $40. To $40. Um, and then overall, this whole this whole formation takes on a completely different meaning. As you can see right here, we do have this as a sending broadening wedge, which is verified by the volume signature. Uh, typically, a bearishly resolved pattern. Not always. I mean, I've seen every fucking pattern break out every goddamn which way. So as I like to say, probably getting probably come into meme itself um <clears throat> but uh but yeah uh, if you know that would be that would be confirmed if we actually broke mm, about, about that 52 dollar region actually 52 and a half i suppose would be the official area um so yeah a lot of things agree with uh with, with, with that as well um but i would be looking for you know if i'm trading like the very low time frames i'm looking for more immediate uh downside uh, right here let's kind of rest on this area it's looking a little bit weaker um okay cool so we spoke about that i think that's that does it for that let's go talk about some some other top shit coins let's go check out the bmb shit coin uh you can buy your shit coins with your shit coins it's like fucking exhibit created a goddamn cryptocurrency and getting rejected from this upper resistance trend line right here at 17 dollars and a quarter uh, as we spoke about before kind of your prior highs coming all the way back from uh, Jan uh sorry june of 2018 uh bnb definitely you know i shouldn't call it a shit coin it's it's, it's had the best chart the best the best reactions out of uh you know out of out you know, out of the altcoins um, and, you know, in the top 10, but it also kind of does its own thing as well. Uh, you do see that it is getting rejected though, and we will be printing likely some bearish divergence, I'm going to imagine on the daily. Yes, we are. We actually got one, two, three drives now and back below the exponential. I would say that this guy wants to come down a little bit more. Daily Stokes, ooh, are wanting to cross up right now. Funny. Um, so yeah, I mean, this, this, this is where it gets a little bit more difficult because, you know, when I look at some, like, when I look at all coins, I typically say it's going to do likely whatever Bitcoin, Buterol, and Mrs. Litecoin do. Uh, BNB coin is not like that. She's not like the other coins. She's her own coin. She's the queen coin. Um, the one true queen. And... <clears throat> You know, I do think that it comes down here, but it's been quite resilient. I wouldn't be getting bearish on something like this until it like fully breaks fourteen dollars and uh, twenty cents or so. Um, but I would be looking for I, I would be looking for this to come back down and, uh, and 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 consolidate lower, most likely. I, you know, with the rest of the market kind of looking more like it wants down, I would say that it probably uh, you know lines up for that. Also, looking at the jewel, the jewel will line up for a perfect sell signal, like the the most perfect of perfect sell signals. Um, I'd imagine in the next few days, the next few days, uh, that will actually be there. So again, it's, I mean, that would be like maybe one of the most perfect sell signals I've ever seen, uh, but it's still going to take a few more days to confirm. Um, but if, you know, the longer that it stays up here, the more and more chance that that, that, that signal has to build up and it's going to suggest a more and more greater uh, drop. Uh, let's go look at uh, Zcash. 
Uh, what's Zcash doing? Still in a descending triangle. No, it is still in a descending triangle. Oh my god, getting rejected from the 89 exponential once again. Just ran out at the top of this triangle and lost all major movement evidence on that last daily little tick. Zcash looks like it wants to revisit the lows. Um, let me actually confirm this, did we? Oh, sorry, no, we did not. We did not confirm below the 21 exponential yesterday. I apologize about that. I got that wrong. Um, we have resistance right in this area that we're currently looking at. So it's, I'm mean, sorry, support in this area that we're currently looking at, uh, but I need to see it close below the 20 max exponential first, uh, and then I could get a little bit more bearish on it. Bcash, the real Zcash, putting in some bearish divergence right here and looking like it wants to come down, just like we spoke about yesterday. Uh, yep, daily daily bearish divergence on the top, back below the exponential, kicked out of the bullish control zone, wants to come back down to at least 149 and a quarter, uh, perhaps a lower though if the rest of the market starts going, because this one certainly does not do its own thing. Uh, Tron Cash, back down to the low side of the range, as we spoke about yesterday, getting rejected from two and a half cent, back down. Fucking classic Neo Cash, Neo Cash having some more continuation as we spoke about. Um, uh, Eight ninety. I'm not. And I, I feel like I'm coming off arrogant when I say these sorts of things. I that's not my intention. It's just you know when we watch these charts together and we see these things unfold, it's nice to be able to reference things from the past and say, hey, this is what we we're looking for. This is how it you know it turned out. And you know obviously because we do these videos every fucking day. Um, you know, you know, things happen at a snail's pace, but to be able to see it in, you know, in the past and then, and then, and then, vi and then witness it in the pre uh, in the present is, is, you know, is what's going to make you a good trader. Uh, but Neo Cash coming down as well uh, needs to break the 50 exponential uh, right now. That has been the support. It looks like it wants to. Daily stokes are down and gaining momentum, gaining momentum, a lot of momentum down. Daily RSI is once again headed towards the bearish direction. Uh, I'd say that this, you know, it wants to come down. Uh, next big support would be 835. Uh, EOS Cash mm, resilient Resi did not have the same drop that we saw in the other majors yesterday. Uh, 360 support and more preliminary resistance. Well, technically, I'd say 383. Uh, but probably going to go with the rest of the market. Uh, RSI a little bit. Mm, nah, I, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Uh, let's go to XRP cone. Where is Mr. XRP? 30 cents. Oh, no. The nipple. The nipple is freed. Holy fucking moly. Well, it's not like a full free signal. Uh, I'd want to see below 29 cents for that. But we have broken this trend line right here. Retested it yesterday and down and uh, likely looking for a retest of uh, 29 cents low 29 cents area um so yeah slowly but surely just getting ground you know as we've been talking about we've been looking at this one for months just slowly but surely it just happens uh daily stokes obviously down daily rsi down into the bearish control zone as well uh what about monero cash monero cash following the rest of the market no not monero monero actually got a little bit of a hunt outside of this triangle this consolidation triangle but quickly shoved right back on in as typically happens during a weekend breakout you know quote unquote breakout right um and uh, resting on support right now, the same 50 exponential that we see on all the other majors, right around $51 and uh, 14 cents if it breaks that area. You'd be looking for a move down to 47 and three quarters. Uh, stellar Cash uh, coming down as well. We spoke about this uh, ages ago. I mean, we, we spoke about how this magical line was going to resist price action um, on, in, in middle of March. And ever since then, we've just seen down after that, after getting rejected right here. Uh, technically speaking, this does have a measure move pointing us all the way down to nine and a half cents. I don't know how much I trust that. Uh, I'd imagine that we're probably going to see a lot of the market try to bounce day off the 50 exponential. Um, and then depending upon how far that bounce gets or, you know, I mean, maybe it maybe it's legitimate and it does bounce all the way back up. Uh, but as long as this thing's back down below uh, ten and a half cents, I'd be more bearish on it um, with potentially looking for a bounce somewhere soon. Uh, daily stokes are down. Daily RSI is headed for the bearish control zone. Yeah, I, 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 and this is overall an ascending broadening wedge, right? Um, and really what we're doing something like this we're forming something new we're forming like an a, we're forming like a massive massive descending broadening wedge which is typically a, a, a bullish reversal pattern um but it's you know th those can take a long time to very long time to play out uh so yeah all right let's go check out traditional marks traditional markets uh closing exactly where we left them off on friday actually uh pretty much unched pretty much unchanged uh, uh actually regain the 21 exponential so am i am i going to be wrong on looking for traditional marks to uh, come back down to 275 and a half well let's go down to a lower time frame and see how this kind of populated out yeah okay now now that we go down to a lower time frame it's kind of revealed that uh there is pressure down here we're just having consolidation right on the open on monday and uh, looking at me like it wants to be resolved to the downside uh, most likely, and again, uh, 275 and a half, 275 ish areas we'd be looking for for support. Um, you know, still major bearish divergence on the daily, uh, I believe. Yep, 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 yeah, one, two, three drives. Yeah, it's, I mean, you know, we, we can bounce this baby all the way back up to 281. 
still get rejected from there and head on down. Um, although I, I do think that this one heads down sooner, you know, sooner before, before bouncing. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for that. I think that's just about everything that I want to speak about. I'm going to get back to building this computer. I'll very briefly talk about uh, the most important things we have on Bitcoin. Then I'll leave you off till maybe later today. If I'm done with the computer, then I will do a live stream. If I'm not, then I might not. Although, you know, I kind of, you know, I, 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 I do want to do one, man. It's it's fun, you know? It's fucking fun. But it's going to be so much more fun when we have this massive cave computer and it's just lit up like the fucking Northern Lights and powering everything that I've ever dreamed of doing because, my God, that's what I want it for. This, uh, this laptop... Um, gets clocked up pretty fast, man. Uh, so yeah, uh, most important thing we have support right around here, 3850. Uh, if that breaks, be looking for a move, a, a nice flush down to 3700, 3650, somewhere right around here. Uh, by the same token, as long as we are below 3930, 3940, I would be overall bearish. Um, if we do break back above 3930, I'd be looking for another move back above uh, 4000, about 4050, maybe 4100. Uh, test the 21, sorry, test the 200 exponential on the weekly formally. I think that that is very unlikely to happen right now. I do believe that there is more pressure downs. I do believe that we see more continuation down. Um, but going to grind out this area first and find out, you know, you know, it's going to fully confirm this as resistance as seen on the lower time frames uh, so far getting rejected from this from the blue box territory. So as long as we're below this, I would be leaning to the downside. Technically speaking, 3850 is your support. Um, can take some while to break if it breaks. That's what I'm looking towards. And uh, and if we were to take out the blue box territory, the upside, I would not want to be short. I would be I'll be closing shorts, and I'll be I won't be putting on longs, but I'll be kind of repositioning perhaps somewhere right around here, or maybe not at all. I mean, at that point, you know, you got to be thinking about the monthly. So that's going to do it for today. But an absolute pleasure to speak with you, and I'll be potentially back on later. If not, I want to wish you well. I want to wish you a beautiful rest of your Tuesday, and uh, take care.